And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. If you were looking for a military commander to take an impossible mission, you'd probably look for someone with tremendous courage, a track record of performing well under pressure, perhaps someone with an intimidating presence too. Gideon had none of these qualities, and yet he was handpicked by God to deliver his people from the cruel and formidable Midianite army. Gideon's life is an example of the strength of God being displayed in weakness. When we first meet Gideon, the weakness is evident. He is hiding from the Midianites, attempting to thresh wheat covertly in a wine press, Judges 6.11. The process of beating out grain and separating it from the chaff normally took place out in the open, on a hilltop, where the breeze would blow away the chaff. But fearful that the enemy might spot him, Gideon took cover in the shelter of a wine press. No one would have accused Gideon of being overtly courageous. Gideon also struggled to muster the faith necessary to trust God's promises. Even though the angel of the Lord had promised Gideon victory in his campaign against the Midianites, Gideon wasn't convinced he was the right man for the job. In his doubt, he asked God for a miraculous sign. He left a fleece of wool on the threshing floor and asked the Lord to soak it with dew while keeping the ground around it dry. But when God gave Gideon the very sign he asked for, he asked for another. This time, he wanted the ground to be wet and the fleece to be bone dry. God, in his great patience, gave Gideon what his trembling heart needed. Of course, Gideon's actions should not be viewed as a pattern for believers to follow. As Christians, we do not ascertain the validity of God's word by asking him for miraculous confirmation. Instead, we live according to his will by believing him and being obedient to his word. Even though God's promises should have been enough for Gideon, the Lord still met him in his weakness. Neither Gideon's lack of courage nor his timid faith disqualified him from his assignment. In fact, when Gideon assembled a volunteer army of 32,000 capable Israelites, still a small army compared to the military might of Midian, the Lord commanded him to downsize. He wanted Israel to know it was his power, not theirs, that brought their deliverance. Gideon had been nervous with an army of 32,000, so imagine how he felt when 32,000 of those men packed up and left for home. 10,000 warriors remained, but God wasn't finished slimming down Israel's forces. He had Gideon lead the army to a nearby brook. Every man who cupped the water and lapped it up like a dog could stay, while every man who got down on his knees to drink was sent home. In the end, only 300 men remained. From the standpoint of proven military tactics, reducing one's army from 32,000 to 300 makes no sense. But the Lord was declaring an unmistakable point, not just for Gideon, but for all of Israel and for us. They were about to see his power put on display. It was time for them to be courageous, not because they themselves were strong, but because the Lord fought on their behalf. In the dark of night, Gideon's armies blew trumpets, smashed pitchers, held up blazing torches, and shouted, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Dazed and disoriented, the half-asleep Midianites panicked. Thinking there must be Israelite soldiers everywhere in their camp, the Midianites were unable to distinguish friend from enemy, and they slashed a path of escape through one another. Incredibly, the Lord used Gideon, a faint-hearted grain farmer, to deliver his people from their deadly enemies. He was the most unlikely of potential heroes, but God elevated him to win a decisive battle against impossible odds. Not to exalt Gideon, but to demonstrate his mighty power to save his people. 
In response, Gideon rightly recognized that the Lord alone deserved all the glory. Despite his fear and weak faith, Gideon did all that the Lord asked of him, in that he proved himself a worthy servant. His example of faith-filled dependence on the Lord serves as a reminder that God supplies strength to those who trust him. God bless.